The second layer of the adrenal cortex is the zona fasciculata, and it produces glucocorticoids. And the main one of the main functions of glucocorticoids is to in keep the blood glucose levels constant to deal with long-term stressors. And examples of glucocorticoids include cortisol, hydrocortisone, as well as corticosterone. So the regulation of this, these glucocorticoids is much the same as the regulation of the mineral corticoids from the outermost layer. The cortisol, cortisol is released in response to ACTH from the anterior pituitary, and ACTH is released in response to CRH from the hypothalamus. And so there's normal negative feedback systems in play where CRH is going to be released when the cortisol levels are low. And the opposite is also true. When cortisol levels are high, it inhibits ACTH and CRH through the negative feedback system. So the cortisol is going to increase blood levels of glucose, fatty acids, and amino acids, really major fuels that are needed. Another metabolic effect is gluconeogenesis. And this is a formation of glucose from fats or proteins, non-carbohydrate substances. So excessive levels of glucocorticoids can have negative effects though. Can depress cartilage, bone formation, inhibit inflammation, depresses the immune system. This would be a reason why doctors would not want a patient on um, steroids for a very long period of time for some of these side effects. So when there's too much, too many glucocorticoids now, uh, that causes Cushing syndrome or Cushing's disease. And in this case, there's um, um, fatty deposits. And the signs of this are a moon face or a buffalo hump, which we'll see on the next slide. And the opposite, the hyposecretion, when there's too little glu glucocorticoids, this is called Addison's disease. And it happens with a... Uh, deficit in glucocorticoids as well as mineral corticoids. There's weight loss, severe dehydration, and also low blood pressure can result. So our next slide shows us here Cushing's disease. So a patient before the onset is on the left, letter A, and letter B is the same patient with Cushing syndrome. And you can see the characteristic buffalo hump here on the back of the neck, and some fatty deposits also in the face. So the innermost layer now of the adrenal cortex is called the zona reticularis, and it secretes gonadocorticoids. So the first part of the letter usually can tell you what it, what it does. And those would be androgens, uh, male testosterone hormones, and it's present in both genders, so it contributes to secondary characteristics, sex drive in women. So that's why men, women will have a bit of testosterone in their system. So the uh, innermost layer now of the adrenal gland we'll look at is the adrenal medulla coming up, but before we do that, let's talk about an increase in the amount of um, testosterone, hypersecretion, that could lead to masculinization here of females. So the innermost part of the adrenal gland is the adrenal medulla, and the adrenal medulla um, is very, very important when there's large drops in blood pressure. So let's say, for example, a patient is losing a lot of blood via hemorrhage. This is going to cause a decrease in blood pressure. The release of some of these catecholamines, and those catecholamines, 80% of them are epinephrine, 20% are norepinephrine. They all cause vasoconstriction, increase heart rate, increase blood glucose levels, all the things that you might imagine would be necessary when blood pressure drops. 
and other chemicals besides this that could, would be released as well would be ADH. Remember that ADH reabsorbs water and puts it back into the bloodstream. So this slide now is showing stress and the adrenal gland. That's one of the big things that the adrenal gland is responsible for. So zooming in here, looking at the left of our focus figure, we can see action potentials that are triggered, go to the hypothalamus, and um, in this case though, this is the adrenal medulla itself. So the hypothalamus functions via the same pathway with CRH, affecting the adrenal cortex, but the adrenal medulla is sympathetic, the sympathetic nervous system. So it responds by directly releasing these catecholamines directly into the blood, the epinephrine and the norepinephrine for the fight or flight system. So that increases blood pressure, increases heart rate. It's also going to dilate the bronchioles so that more oxygen can get to the tissues for think exercising and also the metabolic effects are making sure that there's enough nutrients available for that person to deal with that stress at that time. So because this happens so quickly, we refer to this as the short-term stress response. So the long-term stress response then is going to involve the adrenal cortex, which you've already learned about. So we can see in this case, there's stressors that cause the hypothalamus to respond, secrete CRH, travels to the anterior pituitary gland, and the anterior pituitary then releases ACTH. And again, both of these are gonna have a negative feedback effect. ACTH travels to the adrenal cortex, and it causes the adrenal cortex to synthesize glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids. And remember that the mineral corticoids are from the glomerulosa, that's the outer layer of the cortex, and the um, glucocorticoids fr come from the next layer, the zona fasciculata. So mineral corticoids, uh, glomerulosa, glucocorticoids is the fasciculata. So we see the effect um, on the kidneys. This will be the long-term effect of increasing blood pressure. So it's a long-term stress response, allows somebody to survive in a stressful situation for a long period of time. So the clinical imbalance, the homeostatic imbalance that can occur in this case, if there's hyposecretion of these catecholamines, there's usually no problems associated with this, but if there's too much, it can be very, very bad uncontrolled sympathetic nervous system. So hyperglycemia, the glucose is too high. The metabolic rate is increased, a rapid heartbeat, palpitations. And it can be due to a tumor that's in the adrenal medulla called a pheochromocytoma. So our next slide is summarizing the adrenal gland hormones, their summary and the effects. So the first three rows are showing the adrenocortical hormones, the hormones that are secreted from those three layers in the cortex. And they're all going to be stimulated by ACTH, so it works via the classic hormonal stimulus. The target of them is shown here. So too much mineral corticoid could lead to aldosteronism, too little Addison's disease, too much glucocorticoids Cushing, and too little Addison's disease. And then the gonadocorticoids can lead to androgenital syndrome. And then finally, the inner, inner layer of the adrenal gland is the adrenal medulla, and catecholamines are released from there. And those catecholamines can cause a prolonged fight or flight effect hypertension.